Now is the moment to put our feet on the ground, and we are going to show you three very interesting demos. We start with Synapse Embedax, so let's start with the next presentation. Thank you. So yeah, this this is um, a kind of exciting integration, um, proof of pr proof of uniqueness, not just proof of humanity. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Linea's proof of humanity campaign, um, it's it leverages Verax um, uh, as a database for proof of humanity attestations. Um, so it allows any DAP within the Linea ecosystem to just plug in and quickly verify uh, that the owner of a wallet address is a human. Um, and this has tremendous tremendous value across the ecosystem. Um, wh where it came from was was we we weren't prepared for the amount of bots and sybils. Um, we just we had absolutely no idea. And this this goes back all the way to the testnet um, last year. Like even before Linear launched last year, we we ran a testnet on uh, Gurley, um, and there were so many bots. I think. Like, I remember being told that there was something like 50x the number of bots than real humans. Um, we were it was just an absolute tsunami, so much that we actually broke Gurley. The amount of activity on the bridge uh, brought down Gurley for a few days, which didn't make us very popular. So we had to really think uh, seriously about civil resistance and um, how we would we would actually figure that out. Um, we didn't want to think about like just choosing a single provider, even though there's some amazing providers out there. Um, we wanted to do it in a way recognizing that we weren't the only people who were suffering from, you know, civil attacks and bot, bot farm attacks. Um, it became such an industry that it affected everybody. So we wanted to to leverage um, the, the the linear kind of in, engagement campaigns in a way that benefited the entire ecosystem, so that other DApps could could uh, benefit from the authentication that we were doing. So we came up with this proof of humanity idea, um, and we wanted to give users as much optionality as possible. Um, so that meant uh, having a whole range of different providers so that you could either do KYC or you could leverage your existing exchange credentials or you could go through Gitcoin Passport or whatever, whatever suited your, your needs and your background. Um, and it was pretty successful. I think we achieved our aims. I think there's something like five or six, I think five, 0.5 million attestations and like a million and a half unique users. Um, and it's great having that database that people have confidence in that they can plug in and say, yeah, there's definitely like a million and a half wallet addresses we know are human. Um, but it's it's really difficult. So it does require some management. It's a constant struggle against bots uh, and the innovations that bots keep coming up with. Um, but we are learning as we go along. Uh, we're hoping to maintain this database so that, uh, again, dApps can uh, quickly verify that a wallet address is, in fact, a human, because we see that as being tremendously valuable to the linear ecosystem. Um, so this demo itself is something that's really, really uh, valuable because it goes beyond proof of uh, humanity and introduces this concept of proof of uniqueness that I think is quite unique. Um, to, uh, I don't know if you want to go through the demo to explain it a little bit more, or will I go through it a bit? Oh, yeah, no, I can uh, clearly. Uh, All right, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll leave. Yeah. Maybe uh, one element uh, first is that uh, before talking uh, with Linea, we talk with uh, many of uh, layer twos, like you know, we talk with uh, all of them, I think. And um, when you are about to launch a token, you don't really want to take risk, right? Like when you are like a tier one project, who has like a few billions potential valuation, implementing something new is actually super challenging because everyone is going to compare your data with the data of others. So when you are Starknet, Arbitrum, Optimism, Linear, they are all being compared and everyone is going to look at who has the most transaction, who has... And so there is kind of this thing where everyone is kind of happy to keep this bot in. And I think it's uh, actually very uh, admirable to take the risk and to say like, yeah, no, this is better for the ecosystem. We don't necessarily care of, you know, trying to compete on who has the biggest numbers, but we actually want to build a true honest ecosystem is actually, uh, so it's nice to see, you know, you doing it at first. And I'm sure now that, you know, you kind of showcase that there is a new standard possible. But uh, other layer twos are actually going to to follow on that. 
And so, yeah, for the demos, it's very quick. So uh, we are not going to be too long on this. So once you want to prove that you're unique, you simply need to sign in with uh, your favorite wallet. So you can sign a message. Once done, uh, you are going to claim your credential. And so to do that, you need to go through uh, the Synapse uh, interface. So you need to do this liveness verification. I think the most important point here that we haven't probably said enough is how uh, this liveness actually works. So with this process, what you do, what this AI does is really to make sure that it's really a human in front of the camera doing the process. So it's deepfake resistant. Uh, if you try to display a video, we are going to catch that. So we can really make sure that it's you in front of the camera doing this process. Once done, we are going to take your face and change it into what we call a face graph. And this face graph is kind of a fancy word to say a hash of your face or your ZK face. So it's really like impossible to reverse the system. And so from this face graph, it's impossible to recreate your face. Then we delete your picture. We don't keep anything. We only keep this face graph. And with this face graph, we are going to compare it with all the other face graphs that are inside the application. If there is no match, it means that you're a genuine uh, user. If there is a match, it means that you are trying to register uh, a second account. So all that is being done in uh, 10 seconds. And once you're done, you can uh, claim uh, your credential on your private ID. You need to pay a $1 fee that we are taking. Sorry. Uh, and uh, once uh, this is done, then you can verify that this has been uh, claimed. And so you can go and actually ver verify on Verax that uh, the attestation is available and that you know now you have done it through Synapse with Privado ID. You have your attestation on Verax, so it's, it means that you can leverage basically two ecosystems, the Privado one and the Verax one. And that's all. Excellent. Very cool. Uh, well, yeah, and just, just to reiterate, like once it's in Verax, um, if you're an adaptive developer, you can access this information. So um, you can plug into Verax um, and you can access this. You can compose it with other attestations as well. So not just proving your humanity, but also proving if you're a DeFi DGen or a DAO activist or a gamer or whatever. Um, and it's, it's very, very easy to, to consume and compose. So just to start thinking about attestations and start thinking about what you can do on chain and moving away from uh, APIs to on chain data. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Uh, some of the things I mentioned before. So we partner with Privado ID in Transac to really make uh, reusable KYC. So I'm just going to give you a quick um, glimpse of the product. So really the main use case is obviously uh, you know, to, to have this reusable uh, KYC layer. In this case, we are seeing, like for example, a game. And I want to just verify my age as we tokenize uh, the identity. In this case, then we're using zero knowledge proof just to disclose the age. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's really up to the uh, builders to come up, you know, the different use cases. I think uh, I'm particularly excited because it's not just uh, tokenizing the identity, but then really you can have a lot of different data points that become like credentials by themselves. Like for example, date of birth or age uh, <clears throat> and then countries, etc. There are all different data points which you can leverage, and we're working on this to make um, APIs that you can use. Obviously, the user consent is again like super important, and it's still early stage, but this is the kind of the vision. Um, like <clears throat> as I mentioned before, like we are distributed in uh, over 400 apps, so we we expect like uh, to to unlock a lot of different use cases in the industry. And like uh, I, from the user perspective, really, it's like you're you're doing just a KYC, 
with one of the well-known providers. So like it doesn't change anything. And then you will be able to claim from Transac itself, there will be a decentralized ID um, sort of um, in, in the menu, and then you will be able to claim it on chain. So like, um, as you can see, like this is kind of the flow uh, where you, you will be verified. And then uh, this is, for example, the credential KYC level two, which can, uh, allows you to, to have uh, like higher limits. So we'll, have, we'll also have different credentials based on the KYC level. And then what you will be able to see is like this my decentralized ID. So you can uh, just scan it uh, and get verified in different apps. Uh, obviously this works in conjunction with the Polygon uh, private ID app. And like here, we're just seeing like a few different use cases. Yeah. Um, excited for the partnership. If you want to know more, just feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'm Kaya Kanamori from Sony Bank and also uh, the masters from Settlement. Uh, let me make a presentation about uh, our activity and uh, what we are doing with uh, Polygon. Okay, uh, firstly, uh, uh, this is the uh, structure of the Sony. So please raise your hand who knows about the Sony. Okay, thank you very much. But uh, uh, please raise your hand, uh, hands uh, who knows about the Sony Bank. Oh, really? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, at this moment, uh, Sony Bank itself uh, providing the internet banking service only in Japan, so who uh, some of um, we know, but uh, I think most of you don't know. But uh, this is the business structure under the Sony Group. So under the Sony Group Corporation, uh, for example, uh, the gaming, it is for the PlayStation, and uh, for example, the music or pictures, for example, for the Spider-Man, and also a entertainment and the technology service, which is for the uh, TV or headphone, and also imaging sensing solution, which is uh, devices. And also here, financial service. Uh, uh, this is for the, yes, uh, financial service in provided in Japan. Okay. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, Sony Bank uh, uh, growth strategy as bank. Okay, so uh, in the area of Web3, we expect the entertainment uh, service will expand in uh, even in financial field. So uh, we expect the utilizing or uh, collaborating with Sony Group, uh, we want to expand the, uh, well, we want to deliver the uh, entertainment service based on the Web3. And uh, okay, so on that, in that timing, of course, as we do, wallet or NFT or stable coin uh, would be important. And also financial as a financial institute will be already issuing the security token STO in the market in Japan under the Japanese regulation. So this is the uh, resale strategy of the Sony group or Sony financial group. Okay, so these are the activity which we already have done. Okay, for example, in Japan, uh, we sponsored for the most famous Japanese singer, uh, Juju, and also uh, we sponsored for the, this concert event collaborating with Sony Music. And also, uh, yes, for, let's say around 50,000 50, people are gathering in one baseball stadium, and uh, we provided NFTs to the customers. And they run, download it and they utilize that. Uh, for example, that NFT could be uh, uh, enjoyed or utilized with the AR function. So the, uh, if the customer uh, take the picture with that, that digital sign is, is shown on that, for example, stage, and they can share on the SNS. So that NFTs are quite uh, out downloaded by the customers. So, uh, and also that uh, second one is the uh, about the security token offering. So we launched a security token offering. And also in addition to that, uh, the back asset is a green bond, US dollar based green bond. So the purpose for the investors uh, of the customer is for more green uh, 
uh, purpose or something. So they, we want to uh, give the kind of these SDGs or uh, SDGs experience to the customer. So uh, we present this NFT, and also we customer has this NFT. That digital space would be delivered to the customer. So on that uh, digital space, the tree will grow up in two years. So customer can understand why they are investing for the green purpose, and they can realize how it will go on. And thirdly, we sponsored for the esports event. So, okay, uh, it's uh, partly of the PlayStation team. So uh, we sponsored for that, and also we gave the NFTs who participate for that event. And also uh, the customer who has this digital asset NFT, uh, they can go to the digital space. And in addition to that, uh, soon we will launch uh, smartphone application, Sony Bank Connect. So this is the Sony Bank Connect naming, and uh, we will we can download it in Japan. And uh, with that application, the NFTs could be shown, and also it's easy to go to this, uh, this, this, these digital spaces. And in addition to that, uh, we are doing uh, stablecoin POC with Settlement, and also based on the Polygon. So uh, we are doing this POC. So with this kind of activity, of course, stablecoin would be important. And also later on, the, this uh, KYC or digital ID, and of course, uh, Polygon ID technology would be very important. OK, so that's a, a scheme uh, which we are doing. And uh, uh, collaborating with Settlebit and the Polygon, yes, we are doing uh, this POC with, about the stablecoin. So the purpose of that is, the, for example, one thing is regulation. So as bank, we need to uh, issue the stablecoin. We want to issue the stablecoin, but uh, we need to take care for the KYC or privacy issue. And also, we need to study about the uh, business. And also, we need to make some technological improvement. So that's the POC activity or uh, purpose. So let uh, me touch upon this. And uh, please, uh, let me pass to the uh, Matthew. Thank you, Kanamori san <laughs> Just very briefly about uh, settlement, what we do. Uh, maybe another round of questions. Uh, who in the room has built uh, a blockchain application and put it in production? Show of hands. So out of about 50, probably, I think mean, there's around 60 people here, I think. About uh, 20 people had their hand up. Uh, who, of those people that had their hand up, how many did that while working at a corporate or an enterprise? We've got a show of two, three, four hands. Yeah, and uh, if you look at the, the numbers in, in Europe, at least, less than 1% of developers have experience with blockchain technology. And what that means, and generally speaking, they're not working for large corporates. Uh, what Sentiment does is uh, provide a platform for any Web2 developer to build Web3 applications confidently. And did I go the wrong way? I think we're missing one. All right, the other slide was meant to be uh, to talk about uh, the work we're doing with, uh, with Sony Bank directly, and it's using uh, Provido when we started with so Polygon OD. Uh, so we're having to eventually switch the name to, uh, to Provido. But it's a combination of um, stablecoin, but also looking and uh, creating uh, a new standard, a new token standard for regulated tokens. Uh, so we're looking to, after the the PLC is finished, to open source that and have it as a standard with other schemes as well. So that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.